Hey guys, Pizza here. This video is about Utility Sarah Allen GVG PvP Guide. We will discuss everything I know on to why she can also be played as a utility. And if I miss out something, feel free to comment your question or suggestion down below. As always, just adjust the items accordingly if you have better options available in your account. And with that said, now let's get into it. First, let's discuss beneficial skills for Utility Sarah. For this build to be effective, you need core level 7, you can play around other talisman for different effects, though I wouldn't recommend switching during a fight, because basically the bread and butter of Utility Sarah is dark talisman and hiding. As for the wish to praise, it's this skill, wish chant. Meaning of core level 7 is, if you use wish chant you will get all the special effects, regardless of your current active talisman. You can also select one teammate so they can also gain the special effects, but only the effect of the current talisman that you are using. For example, under Dark Talisman, if you choose to buff a teammate, they will enter hiding status. Similar to Devil Squid Card Stealth, but without the move speed reduction penalty. Also, while Wish Chant is still active, you can still apply debuff effects to the enemies even if you don't deal damage. Next skill is Sky Earth Resonance. Wish Spell is the element of the offensive skills, which is Fire, Dark, and Ghost. Since this build is always on Dark Talisman, it will go like this. If you use Fire Offensive skill, Maple by Flame while under Dark Talisman, the enemy will gain Residual, Ash which is they will take Dark, damage equal to your magic attack. But since we are on Utility side, the two most useful debuff you can apply to enemy. First is Nothingness, which limits their range to 4M for 6 seconds. To activate this, you will need to cast Dark Offensive skill, Butterfly Ripple. But take note that if you use the Butterfly Ripple, make sure to cast it beside the enemy because the skill does not ripple on the center. Second debuff is Soul Penalty, which reduces their resists by 30%. To activate this, you just need to use Ghost Offensive skill, Manipulate Nature, or Sudden Farewell, which is both single target skill. To activate other passive debuffs, you will have to switch Talisman, for example the Unreal, you will need Ghost Talisman, then use Manipulate Nature or Sudden Farewell to activate the debuff. Another offensive skill to activate the debuffs is Return to Sea, which is basically all the elements of Sarah's offensive skill, and then when it reaches the area, it will leave a ripple effect. So you can use this skill to apply multiple debuff to enemies. Other debuffs is from Tarsal Bone Maggot, which have 50% chance to apply burn, blind, or silence to enemies depending on the element of the skill that you use. And last debuff skill, Sudden Farewell, which makes them unable to target a teammate, or they cannot be selected by a teammate. And while under Sudden Farewell duration, it also procs Manipulate Nature every two seconds and with its rune which increases skill delay of enemies. As for the sustain you will get it from, Inner Fire's Blessing, which is while in hiding status, you will have 50% final damage reduction and 5% max HP recovery every second, so it's best to play around Dark Talisman, Wish Chant, and cards with hiding because this will be your only survival skill. With that said, I advise making several builds in your Emer, so you can easily switch cards with hiding if your Wish Chant is on cooldown. So in my buff Emer of my Prepare for Elite, I have Sight, Stealth, and Speeding Up. And as for my Skill tab, I only have two tabs, just adjusted accordingly to perfectly fit your playstyle. For the first tab, I have Manipulate Nature, Sudden Farewell, Return to Sea, Butterfly Ripple, Maple by Flame, and then Wish Chant. As for the second tab, I have Stealth just to know if it's already on cooldown, hiding from Smoky Card which can be used as substitute. If ever Stealth is still on cooldown, prepare for Elite, Fire Talisman, Ghost Talisman, and then Dark Talisman. Now let's head on to Rune Placement. For the Attribute Runes since we are on Utility Build, equip all the blue runes that will boost your damage reductions, and yellow runes that will benefit you the most. As for the S and Star Runes, we'll just emphasize on the important Utility Runes. For Sudden Farewell Rune, I advise to aim for high first line to maximize the skill delay debuff to the enemy. By the way, as for this rune, I carved it to remove the yellow attribute rune requirement, so I can replace it with blue attribute rune. And then for Wish Chant Rune, for higher chance to clear all debuffs to you and the selected teammate. 
For Butterfly Ripple Rune, it will be nice to aim for high first line to make it more spammable. As for the Arcane Runes, I honestly think this are the go-to utility Arcane Runes for GVG, but if you prefer to use other Arcane Rune, just adjust it accordingly. Now for Stats Allocation, Max out Vit for more HP, then Int for additional status resist, and then allocate the rest to Dex for casting time reduction. Take note that I already have Meal B here and 6 pieces Prontera Royal Salad, just to give you an idea of my overall stats. For Utility Class, Pump up your HP, Crit Def for critical physical attacks, Auto Attack Reduction, Skill Damage Reduction, Def and Magic Def Percent, Damage Reduction, Magic Damage Reduction, Resists, Element Reduction, Demi Human Reduction, and lastly, Medium Size Reduction against Physical Classes. Now let's head on to Equipments. Again, just adjust anything if you have better options available on your account. And remember to maximize Emer Notebook switching to make different builds so you can easily switch items and cards if needed. Marine Soul Bulwark offhand for element reductions. As for Enchant, aim for tenacity. For Emer buff switching, I'm using Sins of Living for cooldown reduction of stealth. Card options for offhand are Golden Thief Bug Star, Basilisk, and Snake Demon Gorgon card. Tide Rider's Armor for more element reduction, stun and freeze resist. As for enchant, aim for double status resist. Card options for armor are Wolf Grandma Star, Garm Star, and Angeline Star card. Bespoke Coat Garment to balance out my damage and magic damage reduction. As for enchant, aim for double status resist or divine blessing. Card options for Garmin are Jack Star, Deviling Star, Dark Assassin Cross Areems, and Devil Squid card for Emer buff switching. Super Mecha War Boots for footgear with damage and magic. Damage reduction first line. As for enchant, aim for double status resist or divine blessing. Card options for footgear are Edgar Star, Moonlight Flower Star, Flute Player Star, Dark Lord Star, or Phantom Dragon Galliarantan card. As for the accessories, I actually made resuscitation, ring as shadow equipment, and switched to Martyr's Necklace as main equipment, with Demi-Human Reduction first line. As for Enchant, aim for high tenacity. Card options for Emer buff switching are Harong Star and Smoky Star card. Stardust Dragon Staff for weapon, 430% max HP and damage reductions, and its tier 5 effect which is 50% chance to restore HP, equal to 10% of damage taken. As for Enchant, aim for double status resist or tenacity. Card options for weapon are Spash Higher Star, or Sniper Divine card. Moonlight Bunny for headgear to counter those players using Nuka card, inlaid with Armor 4 Enchant, and Dark Illusion Star card to reduce the fixed casting time of Sudden Farewell and Expel. Shy Reindeer for face gear, for more skill damage and auto attack reduction. Angry Snarl for mouth gear, for additional variable casting time reduction and demi-human reduction. As for Enchant, you can aim for Armor 4 for more crit death and crit resist. Chi Ling Wings for back gear for additional element, reductions and sustain for allies. Inlaid with Blasphemy Enchant for skill damage reduction. Other back gear options are Feline Throne or Midnight Stars. And then for Emer buff switching, use Rock and Roll Cactus or Fate Wheel for cooldown reduction. Star Navigator Cord for Tail for additional resists. Inlaid with Blasphemy Enchant. Other options for Tail are Emotional Cleaner or Amethyst Creature for skill damage reduction. And then for Shadow Equipment, Giant Armor Shield for Shadow Offhand for more element reductions, inlaid with Tenacity Enchant. For Emer Buff Switching, use Arcane Codex for more cooldown reduction. Comet Warfare for Shadow Armor for more Stun and Freeze Resist as well as more HP and element reductions, inlaid with Double Status Enchant. Other option for Shadow Armor is Chosen Gown for the Fear Immunity. Deerskin Manto for Shadow Garment because of the combo with Green Rot Tan Shoes which gives 5% Magic Damage Reduction inlaid with Double Status Resist or Divine Blessing Enchant. Other option for Shadow Garment is Grey Elf's Manto for combo of Stardust Dragon Staff which gives maximum of 20% Damage Reduction. Green Rot Tan for Shadow Foot Gear. I think this is the only option for Utility Class inlaid with Double Status Resist or Divine Blessing Enchant. As for the accessories, again I switched this to Resuscitation Ring, 
As for the Enchant's aim for high tenacity, for Emer buff switching, equip Fox Teeth for the speeding up buff. And as for attack Oracle Extract, you can choose between Orlin's Gown for fixed, cooldown reduction, or Halgrihan Hammer for a 10% chance to break enemies' weapon and armor. For defensive Oracle Extract, I'm using Luet's for additional demi-human reduction. Another option is Meteorite Armor or Deathcat Armor for more status resists. As for the Relic, you can choose between Elf's Piccolo to avoid casting debuffs and for faster expel. Other option is Horn of the Unyielding for more solid tank build to continuously apply pressure to enemies. Overall, for Utility Sarah Allen GVG build, I prefer using the Expel build in War of Imperium, which is not being that aggressive, while sneakily applying debuffs on the back lane of the enemy and then diving for Expel from time to time. And for War of Crystal, I prefer using the more tanky build with Horn of the Unyielding Relic for more aggressive play style, a class that can zone out enemies due to her debuffs, which limits their attack and skill range by 4 meters, as well as applying other status ailments and breaking their gears. And that is all for this video guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you for watching and see you again next time. For more idea of the gameplay POV, you can also watch this videos.